Oh, is your chat on? Oh, chat. <laughs> Let's chat. I can't make it go on. Come on. Mary be on. Sometimes you want to do things. No, oh, there you on. go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Cindy. And Christine. And at Candles and Supplies. Welcome back to our part two on our strategic planning. And it sounds like a big word, strategic planning. It's just really like fun planning for 2023. Fun so, planning. yeah, maybe we should have made it back. Fun planning. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Next year. Our plan is fun planning next year. <laughs> plan is make fun. Anyway, give us a shout out if you're out there so we know that our audio and our video and everything's working and everybody can hear us and stuff like that. So before we get too far into it and get yelled at and stuff. So um, thank you for coming back. I hope you all completed your homework. So like your right. homework from last week was to review your 2022. Um, do your Wheel of Life exercise too fill that all in and stuff. Um, and then we had links to the sheets on there and everything like that. So if you filled all that out, bring it back up so we can, you know, get you go, go on to the next couple worksheets and show you how to use what you already wrote down, incorporate it into what we're about to do as well. Um, Christine kind of wrote me in. I sent, uh, with the email, I sent a sheet of all the worksheets that we're going to be doing because I had two cups of coffee today, so the world better watch out. But she wrote me in so that we could have, you know, better content, take it a, a little bit slower to not overwhelm everybody and stuff. So um, the biggest thing about strategic planning, I, didn't, I don't think I did it for like the first five years that I was in business just because strategic planning, that's for like, you know, college grads and Harvard grads and I'm not, so I didn't do it. But, but um, what I realized is strategic planning is just really you know, thinking about where you're at, what you want to accomplish, what you want to do, get it down on right. paper, write it, type it, whatever you have to do so that, you know, you don't get off track. Yeah. And then if you, from last week's session, I have someone on there so they couldn't find the forum um, on Instagram. If you go into our bio and the link there, um, one of the links in there is for the forum and then Facebook, it was linked on the post and YouTube, it was linked on there. Yes. So if you don't have it or you didn't, find it um it's on there correct so all right see lots of people on here thanks for joining us yeah. all right so this is fun we've been still doing our planning here we, we plan all year long we constantly review this and review the sheets and stuff like yeah. that another big thing about this is like you know life gets you on track with stuff life throws you curveballs i mean there's curveballs there's bends in the road there's bumps in the road there's whole you know whatever the road of life whatever your journey is and stuff um, you, you tend to get sidetracked on daily stress and things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If you have your strategic plan, if you have it written down, what you want to accomplish, you know, you can review it and it's not meant to be like, oh, well, I haven't done this because of this, that, or whatever. It's not meant to beat yourself up on and stuff. It's just meant to like, okay, I feel off track. How do I get back on track? Oh yeah. Look at this. This is what I want to do. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Let's do that. Yeah. Kind of like a to-do yeah. list. So you seem super overwhelmed with all the things you have to do, but when you write right. it down on paper and then you can check them off as you go, it kind of right. helps alleviate Break it down some of stuff. that like yeah. craziness yeah. and you feel accomplished after you cross things off. So it's strategic plan in a way. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a to-do list. Right. And but. then if you're, you know, an overachiever and do more than on your strategic plan, you're like, oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I never do. I strategic plan way more than I'll ever accomplish probably in a lifetime. But yeah. Well, you have, just to, you have to like go to, so you can plan all you want. We can plan like week by week mm -hmm. from the beginning of the year. But things change and things happen. We get requests. We get things. So it pivots around during the year. So Correct. don't think you have to have everything planned out like now or even the next couple months. Like right. you just want to get a big basic idea and then you can kind of do a little bit as you go too. So, right, right. I mean, like you won't know our fall fragrances until like later this summer. So, like, how are you going to add them? So, we don't know our fall fragrances. <laughs> right, yet, exactly. We're doing spring so, fragrances. Yeah. Yes, yeah, like you, got, you don't need to plan it super nitty gritty. Right. So, exactly. Don't stress yourself out about that. And trends change and stuff too. Mm -hmm. So you won't keep up with the trends and capture the trends if you're you plan two or three years in advance and everything. So two or three years. Woo. Yeah, well, that's what the big guys do. So the big, big guys, but they can see too, they're the ones setting the trends so they can that's plan true. that far ahead. So we are, we are um, following trends, identifying and following trends and stuff like that mm -hmm. and keeping up with the latest and greatest. So yeah, yeah cause it's like once like some of the bigger thing, I mean, like I'm thinking fashion specifically, mm -hmm. like runway things come out and it doesn't come out into like apartment stores and like other ones Correct. until like three or four years later. Correct. So it really goes down like that. And it's similar in most industries, I think, mm -hmm. with that way that like it doesn't like you might see it and then it won't catch on. Like it'll call maybe a luxury market first and then it'll trickle down. Mm -hmm. So. 
correct. It's always good to keep your eye out for those type of things too, because you might spot them before they become super trendy. So that's true. All yeah. right, what are we doing today? All right, so we're gonna take our uh, rear view uh, mirror exercise from last week. And if you didn't do it yet, that's fine. Get you, can your just, you can just follow along and then uh, go through it later. Um, so the first one on here, what are you most uh, proud of accomplishing this year? So that's good to know. And then if there's anything um, that you really liked accomplishing that you want to do again next year um, or this year, 2023, um, just highlight that. So we're going to go through and highlight things that we want to essentially do more of for 2023. And anything that we don't want to highlight, we can just forget about it. It's okay <laughs> to have the same things year after year. Like this year, I did not get mad, freak out, and punch anybody. Okay, we're going to say that. That's Keep solid. Going. That's a good goal. <laughs> Maybe you want that again for next year, you know? Yeah, put that again. So if it's one of those things. So um, so then our next one is where did the sales flow easily from without effort? So we kind of broke it down a couple different areas. So take your like top like two, maybe three that you got the most sales from and it was like pretty easy effort and highlight those. So if it was a particular show or two, if it was social media, whatever it was. And that's when they will want to know that we want to put more of into our strategic plan for this coming year. Get your highlighters out. Yes. Highlighters are important. It makes all the words not jumble together. Exactly. Yeah. So we're just, yeah, just like taking our highlight, our awesome, awesome highlights from 2022 and putting them over in 2023 so they can get right. even better. Right. All right. What projects, events, or promotions did you enjoy most? So that's definitely good too. So anything that you really enjoy doing, whether it was um, had monetary gains Whenever. are not right um that's good to take count and then you can like okay well i really enjoyed this last year but i didn't necessarily make that much money from so you can think about this year how am i gonna make more money doing something that i'm really doing correct yeah. and yeah always do more fun things right exactly and more enjoyable <laughs> things all right so what didn't go so well um so what didn't turn out as planned and why um so this one we don't necessarily need to take in account too much depending on what it is You've already written it down, so you're not going right. to do that again. So, yeah. Because it wasn't um, so enjoyable. Yeah, I talked about um, important high, important decisions that in hindsight you would have handled differently. So, like, that might even be something that, like, you decided to go with one payment processor and you really didn't like them. So, you now you, you would have done differently. Well, now it's time to change it. So, exactly. anything like that that was right. a decision that you could change and make it feel better, um, highlight that so you know to put that in your plan as well. If you have a do-over card, what would you have done differently? Um, so I mean, that's not really depending on what yeah. your, depending on what your answer was. Right, right. That's right, just for reference. That. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily going into your plan. I mean, it could be going into your plan. So if you need something, yeah. to, if you need to do something over, so yeah, or even yeah. I mean, say it was like if a you feel lunch. like anything, all of your answers. If you feel like it's relative to 2023 right. and stuff like that, exactly. highlight it. So that way you're just working with your highlighted items. Yeah, so. something that you really like, you want to do more of, it's going to make more you more money, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so into your products, um, so your new additions, uh, most successful. So like highlight those that you want to promote more of this year, make more of this year. Same thing right. with like fragrances. Uh, That's a good way to pick like out that. trends. I mean, you kind of know, yeah. you kind of get a thing. But when you're in the grind of your own business and you're, you're running the day-to-day -day and worried about this, that, whatever, sometimes you don't step back and just be like, oh, this, this, and this, that was really good. So yeah. yeah, I'm I'm doing like this this sheet of like our email campaigns and stuff like that. And it really like looking in the looking in the rearview mirror, really like reviewing everything, it's kind of like, oh wow, that okay. Yeah. I mean, I remember that that was a hit, but you know, I didn't know why. Oh, oh, I remember that, you know, I was slacking in that month and there's why. So like, you know, so it really helps to Put the highlights down, write it down, put the highlights down. Because uh, honestly, I don't remember what happened last year now. I mean, we're mm -hmm. already into 2023. So if you have it down, you'll, you'll remember easier. You'll jog the memory. So, yeah. Yeah. So, like, make sure when you are doing your um, your emails, that type of thing, you're kind of keeping track of what's on each one of them. So then, like, so that's what we were doing with the how much money we got for each email, essentially. Right, right. So, like, that's something that you, I think most email, like, when you're in those, those, yeah, 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 you don't have to them. necessarily track like dollar revenue. You can track, you know, opens or clicks or something mm -hmm. like that, or phone calls from it. You know, whatever you want to track. Everybody tracks things in different ways and stuff. Yeah, so whatever you want to track. Don't most the programs like the was it Mailchimp or don't most of them like track those type of things? Yeah, so you don't yeah. There's a lot of different tracking yeah. things. So yeah. So, yeah, so if you, you have that, an so. email list and you use one of those mm -hmm. like bigger email 
things right. that should track those type of things for you so you can kind of yeah. look back on your statistics and everything and know what to do mm -hmm. more of. All right, so that's kind of done with that for right now. Let's put that to the side. So you have everything highlighted, what you want to do more of, what made you money, that type of thing. Right. All right, so do you want to do this one? Yes. So this is on the this is going to be the first sheet on the email that I sent out today and everything like that. So this is just a very high level kind of left brain kind of exercise, right? So there's different questions here. I'm going to learn how to, you know, like every learning is great. I love learning. So I like to and usually I have like way more things than my brain can handle learning on there. Um, but you can always cross things out. Just write it, you know, whatever you think of this year, I'm going to learn how to whatever, whatever, whatever. So um, that's a good thing to put down. I'm going to do more and that could be a whatever. It could be, you know, more shows, more new product development, uh, more sleeping, more, <laughs> it could be anything. Again, yeah, more, left, I mean, more like left balance brain. type of right. things. Like if you got too right. overwhelmed or something. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. More, this is like full life. Like your, your business life will be successful. If your personal life is successful, you know, everything works together and stuff like that. So whatever you're going to do more of, you can do more of, I'm going to do less of, so that's could be for me, it's always like, anxiety stressing over things that i shouldn't stress over like that goes on my list every single year um you know or do more or less or do less of um you know whatever whatever you want to cut out so a yeah, lot of times maybe, it's not about what you should do but it's what you shouldn't do too yeah or something that's like one of those tasks like i don't know like answering like question email or something you might be able to like get I well, yeah, well, I'm going to do less emails, so that's <laughs> well, always Well, I mean, but you could maybe that look into a part of, like, maybe, like, hiring an assistant or something or, like, mm -hmm. farming that out a little bit. So, like, some of those things you really don't like right. doing, you can look into something, somebody else doing essentially for you. So Correct. If you're Correct. there and ready for that step. Yeah. So you can do less. And then I'm finally going to, again, this could be anything, complete left gray. I'm going to... Um, you know, do my first show this year, I'm going to launch a product line, you know, whatever it could be, I'm finally going to do this now. So um, it could be, I'm finally going to go on vacation. I'm finally going to, you know, have a grandchild. I'm finally going to have a child. I'm going to have a dog, whatever, you know, it could be that type of thing. Uh, yeah. And the next one I'm going to go, and this could be your craft shows. It could be trade conferences. It could be, you know, wherever, wherever you're going to go. So, uh, yeah. And then at the end, I'm excited too. And this, after filling in all those things about what you're going to learn about, what you're going to do more of, what you're going to do less for, I, I find that's a very easy one to fill out. I'm very excited to see all of the above happen, you know, whatever it is. So, um, again, left brain, very high level, just, you know, Put it out there put it on paper you can always cross it off or not do it or highlight the most important things later on so but it's good to get you know a lot of things down on this sheet and stuff like that and it's a real fun sheet with colors and stuff too just very very simple yeah very broad outline for you exactly right and there's no the thing about this there's no wrong answers for anything there's absolutely no wrong answers it's all you know what you want uh, every answer is right um, unless you're doing self-destructive behavior, but don't put that down on there. So, but yeah, every answer is right. So, um, and it, it's all about making your year a good one. So this is a fun sheet, just, you know, real fun. All right. So then our next one, it's a little more, uh, a little more in depth with a lot of questions here. Right. It says this time next year exercise. So we're trying to have a basic, like big overview of all the things we essentially want to right. accomplish and want to do for next year. So we can start getting down to the nitty gritty of right. planning it. So this, this sheet, okay, so there's a lot of questions and they're hard questions and stuff like that. I mean, not super hard questions, but the easiest way to fill out this sheet is either have a beer or a glass mm -hmm. of wine to relax yourself, pretend you're at a New Year's Eve party or something like that, and you're talking about 2023 and what happens. So this time next year, this is what I'm going to talk about and everything. So, um, but again, this is this is kind of hard. It's easier if you relax. That's why, you know, I threw the beer or wine thing out there, just because it's easier to think of these things and you get chattier with, uh, you know, a little bit of alcohol and stuff like that. So only if you have them blocks, like, you know, whatever. So like, you know, Question right. one. Yeah, I'll go through these a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what big achievements do you want to celebrate this time next year? Exactly. So you're at that New Year's Eve party, December 31st, 2023. What big achievements are you going to talk about? What 
a big achievement. So it kind of piggybacks off the rear view right, mirror exactly. exercise. What are you most proud of accomplishing? So what big achievements you're going to put on there will probably go next year on the rear view, like what you're most proud of too. Okay. So, um, what do you want to be known for in your business industry slash community? Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to be known for? So like when people see you in the store, be like, Hey, there's a candle lady. So that's what I get a lot, <laughs> um, you know, or, or whatever. What do you want to be known for? So we went out and we went on a horseback ride and stuff like that. And then somebody that was on the horseback ride is like, Hey, I know you, I took your soap class. <laughs> so, you know, what do you, what do you want to be known for? No. It wasn't my horse riding skills. It was my soap <laughs> <class> skills. <laughs> And that's fine. That's fine. I mean, you get paid to teach, so if you don't get paid to ride. I know, so. and I put a whole lot more time into it, too. So, awesome. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, describe what a typical work day looks like and how you want to feel. That's a really big one. This is, yeah, so this is a big one. Describe what a typical work day looks like and how you want to feel. This is a very important one coming off of the busy season. So in this industry, it's crazy, 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 busy, busy, busy. We run, run, run from September through December. Now we're finally getting to like breathe a little bit and stuff like that. Well, maybe next year you're going to be like, well, why did I not even start making my products until October? Because then I didn't even get a break. I haven't slept since, you know, July. So maybe... You know, when you're looking at that or something like that, um, you know, my work next year, when I work in the busy season, it's not going to be making things. It's going to be more selling things because I'm going to make my things in the summer when there's plenty of time and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe that's it to make your, your work day feel better. Maybe you're going to you find like for me, first thing in the morning, I'm most creative. So I all my good thinking and thoughts and everything are done in the morning um, because my brain is sharpest at that point could be the coffee yeah so say yeah. two cups of coffee, could be the coffee you know, or you know it just is refreshed but um so maybe you'll want to change your work day around and do your creative stuff in the morning or you could be creative late at night christine's more creative late at night so mm -hmm. she talks these big things at night and i'm like and what? she's falling asleep on yeah me, so. I, i'm as I'm a ready, tired member for the next morning so we talk about that i'm ready for bed <laughs> why are you having a deep conversation with me right now so you know yeah. um, so maybe you'll schedule your work day you know around like when you're best and, and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, so. then this could also go to, I mean, if you're still working, whatever full-time job right. you have, and you haven't went full-time into making, right. still a side hustle. this could, yeah, yeah, go into that a little bit. Like, all right, well, you're more of a morning person. So maybe you make some stuff in the morning. So like just kind of knowing that type of thing and how to like schedule your day around it. So it goes a little bit right. like that, that right. too, if you're not full-time in that, where like one morning you're going to schedule your posts for this week mm -hmm. for social media and everything. There's a lot of places that you can do that. So I think Instagram is even doing that themselves now, which will be. Nice. Um, all right. So next one, what is a game changing goal you want to go for? Game changing goal you want to go for. So, so yeah. shoot for the sky. Yeah. Shoot for the sky. If you don't have a game changing goal, that's okay too. So maybe you want your game to stay the same this year. So, you know, because it's been a lot or something, you know, whatever, yeah, you know, your game changing goal will be. It'd be nice to have a game changing goal in mind. So, but yeah. All right. Uh, number five. What events will you attend to expand your reach and create new connections? So maybe something that you came across last year that was already booked out or didn't have you weren't able to sign up for it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking like too. trade conferences or oh, yeah, you know, business seminars yeah. or something like that. So. Get new connection there maybe it's completely related from some other industry somebody that you want to you know hook up with or whatever if you're doing videos or whatever and you need a, a video person to yeah. edit or something it could be a new connection that way so yeah it's no uh, we've had a bunch of customers too that have like their like soaps and stuff like local hotels and stuff will start using them there mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. want more like wholesale stuff so like that's something in your community and that type of thing that like just the type of events like um Think about Q and B, mm -hmm. like that type of thing. So, mm -hmm. like any of your like local community boards or something, it's like would be good to like reach out right. a little bit to them. Chamber just of Commerce, to, Chamber of right. Commerce, just to get get to know those business, people a little bit. IBN, and, Individual Business Network, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, just it's nice to have people. It's lonely at the top, so it's nice to have people that are where you are and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, number six, how many new people will you welcome to your community? So, email list, social media, mentors. So like, that's going to be a followers goal or an email list of how many mm -hmm. people you want to get subscribed and that type of thing. So, 
because more people are following and watching, more sales drive. Mm -hmm. Usually. <laughs> um, what will be your gross revenues for the year? So gross revenues are your total, like whatever you're billing customers out for, including like tax and shipping and everything. That's your total, total top line revenue. So uh, what were your gross revenue? That's kind of hard if you haven't sold anything yet. That's kind of hard, but but throw a number out there. So and like make it realistic. Like just, if you've never sold anything, like don't put down $10 million because that's not realistic. So I mean, yeah, that'd be great. But you're not going to be able to talk about that at a New Year's party. Like, oh, I went from nothing to $10 million. So, I mean, maybe, well, if you do, you know, I definitely want to talk to you. That's amazing. But, you know, just put something out there. Maybe I want to, you know, make a, a, a few extra thousand dollars this year to help out with, you know, whatever my kids. Cover or, Christmas presents. Yeah, like cover that. Christmas presents, you know, put my kids through college, you know, whatever you want to do. So um, just, just throw something out there. Put something down. So. All right. How much will you pay yourself in the year ahead? Yeah, that's kind of tough, especially if you're getting started. You don't always, I can't like be like, oh, I'm just starting. I'm going to get $50,000 a year. Well, that's kind of hard to take $50,000 from a new from business. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from a side hustle and stuff like that. So um, and maybe your pay is like reinvesting your business. If you're starting a business and you need to build your business and stuff like that, like there's no money. If you're growing your business, there's you're, you're poor. So you're buying more product. Yeah, everything. you're buying more product. You're reinvesting yourself and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So your savings nest egg is bigger because your business is growing bigger. But but there's no money in the bank. Trust me on that one. So yeah, but if you're growing. All right. What types of new products is products or services will you offer? So that's a fun right. one. Like it is a fun one. Yeah. Thinking about, water. so think about your product line, you know, what, you know, if you sell wax melts, well, maybe you sell wax melt warmers, or maybe you add, you know, new scents and new colors, or maybe you'll do, you know, a different line, you know, a glittery line for Valentine's day and, you know, an herbal line for the spring and summer and then a spice line, but you know, whatever it's going to be or whatever, um, you know, think about new products and services. Uh, maybe you'll want to do, you know, whatever free gift wrapping or something, you know, whatever it could be. So, um, think of things that you can do that go along with your product line and what you're doing and stuff like that to offer more value to your products. What email campaign shows marketing promotions will you launch? Yeah. Now, again, this is high level. You don't have to have like 52 weeks worth of emails. We're at the New Year's Eve party and we're just talking about this. So I launched, you know, an email campaign. I did a weekly, you know, meet meet a customer or something like that. And, you know, I launched that. So this is a high level thing. Maybe you'll start a blog. Maybe you'll, you know, um, that type of thing. So that not, not granular, not individual, but, you know, Oh, this year I did, you know, a um, interview with whatever, you know, whatever it's going to be. So um, you can put that on there. So high level. What business partners will you make this year? Yeah. So who can you meet? It just goes along with the networking. Who can you meet that can help you out or you can help them out? So if you help people, the world comes back and helps you too. So, you know, if you help people, it'll come back. People will help you. Um, if you find people to help you, find ways you can help them. So, yeah. Um, think about that. So, yeah. So this goes into two. So, like, obviously, we're all kind of on the same. We all sell you the candle soaps, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the way you, whatever your recipe is, whatever fragrances you have, the way you market, your labeling, all of that makes it individual. Mm -hmm. So, some people get too competitive with each other, I think, on that. Whereas you have to remember, like, you're selling yourself part of it, too. You're not just selling the product. Right. So people buy products because they like you and like the um, the marketing and everything with it. So right. don't get too, I mean, I making mean, friends. Think out, good. yeah, <laughs> think outside the box. Um, you know, maybe you are buying pet food every week and you either go into the feed mill or the pet store or whatever and like, oh, I have a line of candles that like really helps with pet odor in the house. So maybe you'll like hook up with that pet store owner and they'll put your candles in the store or something like that. So that's just, you know, for instance, or you like gardening and you go into, you know, the local nursery and it's not like, oh, I have a really great gardening soap, you know, scrubs all the dirt off your hands and stuff like that and still makes them feel soft. And then all of a sudden the garden center is carrying your soap. So if you're buying a lot of stuff from them and they're buying your soap. You're kind of supporting each other. So, yeah, a lot of so local those, businesses are good places to. Exactly, local business people that. want to support local business people. Mm -hmm. so, exactly. All the time. Yeah, we 
Um, so there's a newer place here that does like smoothies and bowls and stuff like mm -hmm. the Aussie bowls and they have a bunch of different, they have a candle in there. They have like a bunch of different like small business, like things that are for sale in there mm -hmm. as well. So like, obviously they're, they're making smoothie bowls, but like, right. You have candles too. And if you have a store again, maybe you can have, you know, people only if you have candles or soaps in your store or whatever. So maybe another local artist and a jewelry maker or, yeah. you know, a painter or something like that can help you out. So, you know, put mm -hmm. them in your store. There's another, there's a bakery around here too that does some things that want a lot of farmers artists in mm -hmm. there too. So like don't even like think about that it has to be along those. Right. It doesn't have to be a competitor. It can be long completely as... something unrelated. So yeah. It's like with local though, like I don't think Walmart's going to carry your stuff. So just. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> local small. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Um, Artisan supporting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. What area of your business do you want to pay more attention to? So this yeah. is a lot where I think social media can come into play too. People ignore sometimes. So like, Could be. Yeah. yeah. So whatever, you know, I had a customer come in yesterday and they got a new warehouse, like a store slash warehouse space and stuff like that. And it was during the season. So they just kind of like threw their stuff in there and was trying to do business and stuff like that. So for her, where she's going to pay more attention to is getting organized, organized getting yeah. things where they should be, you know, getting set up for, for manufacturing and creating a flow and stuff like that. It could be, you know, your social media, it could be, um, you know, whatever, whatever you want, need to pay yeah. attention to and stuff. So, yeah, so whatever it's like your expenses, like yeah, well, with whatever that. you think might be lacking or a little chaotic, mm -hmm. essentially. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, your books are probably like, oh, well, I couldn't tell you what was my most sold product because I didn't keep track of that. Well, right. That could be an area yeah, to pay attention to. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, do you want to speak virtual or live to grow your business? Oh, big one. Yeah. YouTube shorts, uh, live streams, conferences, whatever. Do you want to, do you want to be a speaker? Do you want to dive into that and do that? Or or not local events. There's lots of local business chapter events and, you know, like chamber of commerce and stuff like that events where they just, they're looking for people to come talk about things and stuff like that, teaching classes. So there people are looking for that type of thing. So do you want to do that or not? I mean, maybe that's a no. Or it could be, oh, I like selling online. I don't really want to go out and do that. So <laughs> yeah, it's nice having multiple different streams of income mm -hmm. too. So like you could be selling on like, you have your own website. You could be selling at craft shows. You could mm -hmm. be doing like live events. So you have multiple different things that are bringing in um, streams of mm -hmm. money. So just in case one happens to like the when COVID hit and all the craft shows got shut down. So like it's good you've had other you'd have other things. Right. Like right. you had a website or whatever, and that actually pushed a lot of people to make their websites right. <laughs> because they yeah. didn't have the craft shows. Yeah. So. Uh, what new professional skills do you want to learn this year? Good one, good one. Yeah, so what do you want to learn about? Maybe you want to learn spreadsheets, or maybe you want to learn how to make yourself a catalog, or maybe you want to learn how to make know, soap, get capital. Maybe you want to learn how to make <laughs> soap, or make candles, or you know, carve candles, or mm -hmm. whatever you want. What, what new things do you want to learn about that you can talk about? So, yep. Um, what support team will you put in place this year? Yeah. So who can help you out? Who can help you achieve your goals? So everybody gets stuck. Nobody just flows through their own business or starting a business and nobody just flows and everything happens and it's all easy and stuff like that. Even though we'd like to think that it's not, it's tough every step of the way, every level that you're at, it's tough. Um, so who can you have to support you? And I mean, we're here, so you can always count on us for whatever we can do for you. Yeah. I can't um, answer your emails for you though. But, uh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So yeah. So who can who can support you in what you want to do? So what support team? And this could be you know like it could be you know physical come in and help me put labels on the bottom of my candles or whatever come in and help or you know answer emails or just be like an emotional rock for when you need to like talk to somebody or whatever. It could be any type of support team. It could you know. Uh, there's many different ways to take that. Again, all these things, there's no right or wrong answers. It's just what you need at that particular time where you're at. So no right or wrong answers here. What mentors and coaches will you work with this year for what goal? Right. That's a good one. So always pick mentors, always pick coaches and stuff like that. Cause there's always, there is lots of fantastic people out there that on every different subject that are either the expert or know an expert or this or that. So learn from them, pick the mentors, pick who you want to be. So, and again, people like to help out because the world helps those that help. So yeah, 
pick those. Um, and then maybe you'll have a couple of them. Maybe you'll have a business mentor. Maybe you'll have, you know, a super candle making mentor. Hopefully that's us, but yeah, you know, whatever, whatever it is, um, who do you want to have a mentor for? Who do you want to learn from? It's a lot easier than like learning yourself and making the mistakes and stuff. If you have a mentor or some type of coach. So yeah. Cost you money. In yeah. Place if you don't, a lot cheaper so. too. Yeah. A lot yeah. easier and a lot cheaper if you, if you pick proper mentors for whatever you're doing. So, uh, what systems or procedures will, um, uh, implement this year? Yeah, so that's a good one that can piggyback off the rear view mirror exercise. So mm -hmm. anything that was really difficult, like what, you know, um, what would you handle differently, this and that, maybe you need a procedure for some things, you know, maybe um, I, I'm trying to think of what could possibly have maybe your candles went out without any labels because you, you know, didn't have a procedure after the candles yeah, are burning, you, wipe off the, you know, whatever, you know, make a different procedure for it and stuff like that. So it could be simple, it could be complicated. Maybe you want to document your processes in case, you know, you're at the point where you need to hire people this year, or you're just going to take a few months off and you don't want to forget what you've already learned. So document your processes, maybe that's a procedure. So um, think about, you know, what will make your life easier and stuff so did you add any new sales channels this year yeah good one so sales channels like we were talking about those are um where revenue comes in from so it could be you know word of mouth it could be social media it could be your website it could be a retail store it could be the craft shows that you could do it could be all of the above so it's hard to be everything so pick one sales channel go with it and expand from there so talking about if you're adding any new ones like you just started and it's been word of mouth well maybe you want to do a show or two that's a different sales channel that's a new one that you've added so you can do that or maybe you want to put up a website you've been making 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 you have a lot of stuff no house left <laughs> put stuff them on a website or an etsy site or something like that that's a sales channel so um yeah do all that all right so that was that exercise so we'll go through right some if there's any questions or anything i see yep. a lot of comments and things happening here yeah everybody's cool. awake out there we love it we love it love it love it so yeah if you have any questions post them now you can still keep posting and we'll keep checking them and christine will answer There are so many ways to branch out. I'm pondering several as well. Inventory uh, program, more streamlined is the goal. Definitely marketing as well. Okay. From Farm Girl Candle yes. Company. Yeah. yeah. Farm Girl Candle. Yeah. Inventory is good to track. That way you're not losing things and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that sounds so easy too. Oh, I'm going to put in an inventory control system. Okay. I'm going to put in, in, so that's only a few words, but that's a lot of work. That's hard work. It's good work to get done and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, um, you know, put on your goal that that's very high level. So that was a great one. So right. it's going over there on Facebook. Okay. Need to get closer. Sorry, guys. Yeah. All right. Let's see what's on here. Any questions post in there while we're live and you got our <laughs> attention. Yeah. Talking about life and what throws at you. Sometimes you need to swerve. That's right. Exactly. And duck, swerve and duck yep. and everything. <laughs> Can you post the link to the, yes, we'll post the link to the sheet after all this is done and everything. So absolutely. We had to, it, once we do the live, it's actually a real post and then we can post other things to it. So, but before that it's in the email, so you can always click on the email and get it too. So. Yeah, if you're subscribed to our email list and you open the email, you get the email for the reminder for the live today. So then the forms will be in there, but we can post it on there after too. Being a small business, what type of advertising is best? Good question. Um, I would have to say my number one thing for being a small business for advertising is word of mouth. Let everybody know what you do, why you do it, what your story is, uh, what products you make and stuff like that. Word of mouth spreads fast, fast, fast. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, basic, like most mm -hmm. people have Facebook, like that's the easiest way to get all of your friends yeah. and family to know what you're doing. Create exactly. a Facebook page and repost every post. It gets annoying. It could be annoying, but get every post you post on your business Facebook page, repost it to your personal page. So people are seeing it. Right. So, yep. That's the social media. So word of mouth and social mm -hmm. media is completely free. Like every advertising person will tell you that, you know, just give me a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, whatever, you know, but if you're spending that right off of it, then you're not going to get the results mm -hmm. that you want and stuff like that. So definitely do the free stuff first. It's harder, 
but it's free and it, it's better advertising too. It's, it's stickier. It stays with you longer. That thousand bucks you're going to give to the magazine ad company, they're going to get it. Somebody's going to look at it for two minutes, throw the magazine out and you're gone. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, what a question here. Are you giving bath bomb classes? Oh yeah. I'm working on uh, posting classes this week. So hopefully they'll be on our Friday email. So mailing down the last final things we're, we're redoing it and doing some more fun things that way. So, all right. Hello from, Florida, grateful for you both, and Connie, we are grateful for you too. <laughs> okay. Um, will a replay be available? Yes, we always post these to our YouTube and to we Facebook save it on the and Facebook Instagram. and Instagram, so you can always replay it at any time. Because I know we go fast through this and stuff like that. I know. It's yeah, fast. yeah. We usually so, try to keep it around a half hour, so we yeah. don't want to keep you guys here so forever. The, yeah. So we're even over a half hour the right the now. Trolls but, don't come on. So. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to yeah. bore and you guys then, too much. What email platform do you use? We use Klaviyo, and I really like Klaviyo. Klaviyo, you, it, it's very nice. Um, I used Mailchimp for years. I also like that one. Mm -hmm. Right now we're on Klaviyo because it interfaces to our system very nicely. Uh, but one thing about either one of those platforms, Klaviyo or Mailchimp, they only charge you for you for the amount of email people that you have on your list, subscribers or whatever. So, and usually if you have less than two hundred and fifty, like just starting out, you know. They don't charge you. They want to get you into it, but you get all the features. Like if you had, you know, a hundred thousand subscribers or whatever, and are paying like a lot of money a month. So you get all the same features and, and everything. Um, the only thing is as you grow your subscriber list and stuff like that, then you pay for that. So, um, but that's emails, really good. Email is one of the biggest things though, too. Like that's yeah. a really good. Yeah. Email's channel. a big thing. So that's why all those big stores that you shop, you get like a bajillion emails from them because they know right. the more they like inundate your inbox, the more likely you're to buy from them. Or I'm subscribed right. in my case, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, it was Farm Girl Candles. Something. Um, Farm Girl Candles. Don't try to do all the social medias at once. Start with one or two and master that before moving on. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah, because if you try to spread yourself too thin, you're not going to get anything done. So, I mean, Facebook and Instagram, I think, are the best two places to start. And then you can move on to TikTok and some of those other ones. But, um, are you using Shopify or Squarespace to sell? We do not because we're, or we're too complicated for this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I would love to, but yeah, our NetSuite backs up into our ERP system and stuff like that and everything. So we're using a Sweet Commerce Advanced as ours, but yeah. Yeah, um, but if the the Shopify is the best the one to best start one with. That's the best one to start with. Yeah. Like if you don't, if mm -hmm. your uh, products aren't too crazy yeah. like cars, Like we have 10,000. Well, yeah. I mean, they'll handle a lot of SKUs and stuff like that, but we do things, you know, like, you know, buy, buy one at this price, buy 10 at this price. So quantity pricing, that's another module that goes in there and they charge you more money. All of our shipping options, different modules, they charge you more money. Um, our reward system, that's another module, they charge you more money. So all of the bells and whistles and things that we had on there by the time, you know, I, I looked at Shopify by the time we added it up, it was like... I don't know, nine thousand dollars a month just for our website. I'm like, no, 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 no. So yeah, yeah. so ours is yeah. So built, we, we didn't choose around, that essentially, yeah. and then just added the things we needed. Yeah, so, and but it's a perfect way to start, and they make it super easy. So I would definitely. Yeah. And Ashley that. asked, mm -hmm. "What oh, email platform we got that? I thought it was social platform." So okay, yeah, yeah. So good questions, guys. Everybody was engaged. I love it. I love it. So hopefully you're having yeah. fun planning this. Should, this should be fun. Mm -hmm. If it feels like work, like I said, just just relax. Take a breather, a cup of coffee, a cup of wine, whatever you're gonna have. You know, just just relax and do it. It, it just flows and it works a lot better if you're relaxed and having fun with it than if you're stressing out. So if anything yeah. stressful on there, they write cross out. Like, some days, out. some days too, it might not be the day to do it. Like we have creative days, uncreative days, mm -hmm. and sometimes we like want to plan stuff, but we just can't because we can't think of anything. Other yeah. days we got all the things in the world. Yeah, so, stare at the wall and like no. Uh, I'm done. <laughs> uh, Roxanne wants to know what are the most efficient payment options to start to start charging customers with? Probably like Square. Good question. Whatever. Yeah. Like so well right, uh, Square is very good and stuff like that. PayPal yeah. just changed the regulations and stuff, so uh, well, yeah, we removed PayPal pay well. from our site. So if you're trying to use that, we, we removed it for now because they're not being nice to us. So. Yeah, Square has that little thing that you can put on there. I think mm -hmm. they're probably the most the easiest one. It seems like right now, so they can just put yeah. in your phone and swipe cards, or they have whatever's easy and cheap. They're all pretty competitive, and they all have like the same features. But you want to get your money fast. Like you charge something today, you want to have that money in your account in one to two days um, and you don't want to pay a lot of fees you don't want to pay like you know five six percent for that so keep it like 
two or three percent if you can. So yeah, yeah, whatever works out. So, beat them up a little too. There's a lot of it's a competitive space, so feel free to beat them up when you're negotiating. <laughs> Shopper. So to end this, we have, there's mm -hmm. still on the email if you looked through the the attach right. audio, there's still a lot of things in there. So we're gonna do another session to kind of go into that, but. It's going to be two weeks away because next week we have a very exciting thing that we're going to do. Big product launch next yes. week. So we'll, yeah. we'll see Friday. Friday newsletter, big product launch, and then yeah. we're going to go over that next week. So yeah. we're going to have a little break, get you guys some time to go through all this and like get prepared for You can jump right. ahead if you want to for our next section towards the right. Yeah, I emailed you all the sheets. So next, the next session will be more of like, okay, this is what we do for planning. We did all these high level thinkings. This is what we want. These are our goals. These are our dreams, that type of thing. So mm -hmm. let's get it down. So we yeah. know how to get it done. So yeah, for Facebook and YouTube rubber meets the road then now we're really going so. for Facebook and YouTube. We'll post that, uh, that download mm -hmm. in the, the comments in there and Instagram. You can do that unfortunately. So it'll be a linked into our bio yeah. um, later today or tomorrow. So you can have those. Sounds good. All right. All right. Good work, everybody. You got homework again. So yeah, we got two weeks to do it this time. So yeah, two weeks to do the homework. <laughs> so if you're a week behind and didn't do last right, week, exactly. yeah, an extra week to do it. So, but have fun with it. Have yep. fun with it. So yeah. And then I want to hear one of the things I want to hear this time next year is how'd you do? How, how, how that strategic plan worked for you? Did you, you know, were you on track? Were you not on track? Did you go off in a different way, but still have an awesome year? So that's what I want to know. So that's going to be my thing at the end of the year. Sure. So. I think we had a couple people in our first section comment how they're mm -hmm. going over the strategic plan that they did previously with mm -hmm. us. So, yep. It's, it's always fun. fun. So yep. yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you right. for attending. Yes. Good seeing you all. Happy new year too, yes. by the way. Yes. Yeah, Welcome uh, to 2023. Yeah. It's our first live stream of the year. So been good to us so far our weather's been good usually i know it's like a really spring cold. day outside right it's now like it's 63 lovely. here in pennsylvania <laughs> we're really uh, sucking it up and enjoying it for yeah. now besides so. the mud there's a lot of mud but yeah, there's a lot it's of fine mud, so. all right <laughs> we will see you guys next week all right see ya Bye.